Okay, I'm going to change pace just a little bit. Uh, I was going to build a, a kit that I don't have. It's in a box, but it doesn't have an official box for. And um, come to find out that I don't have the uh, decals. I've got instructions. I can use it, uh, another kit's instructions, but I don't have the decals for it. Uh, which is this, and I have the fuselage inside. Uh, this is a B-17, a 140A scale B-17, but this is the F model, and uh, the Memphis Bell was the B-17F, and I want to use this uh, to do the Memphis Bell, now that I know that for sure that it was the, the F model. Uh, but right now, I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, put out the money for the decals and have to wait for them and everything. I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I'm not, not a very patient guy. You know, if I don't have the stuff to, uh, to work with, uh, then I, I'm not going to build a model. I am going to go ahead and, uh, locate some decals for it and end up building it. Like I said, I got the fuselage inside because I took it, uh, took it into my, uh, my hobby room to do a little research to see if, make sure it was a B-17F. And so, still keeping with that theme, I decided that I'm going to build this. This is a 148th scale of the uh, B-17G. B-17G Flying Fortress by Monogram. Uh, and I do have, I do have the decal sheet. Now see, the reason I don't, uh, I, I'm not building the B-17F, is because I need uh, not these stars and bars markings here. I just need the star for the um, uh, the Memphis Bell. I drew a blank there for a second. Uh, all the you know, all the decals that I have located, they give you the markings for the Memphis Bell, but they don't give you the general markings. Uh, so I've got to locate those and. Uh, here is the the manual. What I do uh, with kits that, that are open like this that I keep in the shop or that I have in the shop, I will take the decals and the instructions and take them inside and I've got a, a uh, booklet with uh, clear pages that I keep my decals and stuff in. Uh, so they're inside in a dry, cool place. Uh, too many times have I lost decals because it's been been out here like this, and I know I I see this all the time. I I I've got some guys that tell me that you know the the heat in my shop doesn't affect the uh, the decals and stuff. Yeah, uh, yes it does. I'll argue with you all day long. It, it does. So I'm gonna uh, get this out of the box and I'll show you the parts. I'll be right back. Okay, to start off, I got a few escapees in the in the box. Let me uh, reposition the camera. I should have done this while I had it paused. This is a uh, one of the engines. Readjust my light. I keep forgetting that. This is one of the engines, and uh, not sure what that is. That may be. For the one of the props, don't know. Uh, and then you got some ground crew or pilots. Yeah, he might be one of the one of the crew members. I'm not sure. And then you got some parts for the bombs. And what I'm going to do while I have them in my hand at the moment is put them in, in this little baggie. There we go. Now this kit comes with uh, with five sprue. I'll show you the, the black one first. It's got a little bit of flash on it, but it's uh, molded pretty nicely. Four big props there. And this is uh, the clear parts. I'm gonna leave them inside. Uh, I'm not looking forward to masking off that ball turret and the top turret. 
I don't like masking round objects trying to paint that framework, but I will. Oh, excuse me. Early in the morning, I just got up. It's uh, 6 30 on Thursday morning. Here is the fuselage. There's one half, and then there's the other half there. And it's got. Uh, it's got the raised panel lines, which is okay. <laughs> then there's the ground crew members. There's part of the, I think that might be part of the upper turret. Not sure, I have to look. Uh, then you got cockpit parts, interior parts, engine cowlings there. There's three of the four engines. I showed you the other one that was loose. And then uh, various parts there. There's nothing on that side really. These two sprue are pretty much alike. Got two big honking wings. Uh, the wings alone are the wings alone are 12 inches. So looking at about uh, probably given the fuselage being probably two and a half inches they're looking at about 26 27 inch wide model so once again the uh this has a uh, raised panel lines as well so but it, like i say it's it's all right there's no big deal uh, engraved panel lines would have been better but not a problem and then the last sprue is just like the one I showed you. Just had a battery warning light. And then, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Here's a shot of the decals. Still look, uh, look pretty decent. Building it straight out of the box. I'm not doing, uh, any particular, uh, Plain, just whatever was you know what's on the on the cover I don't have enough knowledge of these you know aircraft to uh, to build a you know a specific one except you know everyone knows the the Memphis Bell so and then uh, the uh, instructions are pretty pretty easy to read and you got uh, Twenty-five steps, and then the the last two pages gives you two versions. You can either go do the aluminum version or an olive drab version. Probably do the aluminum version, and that's it. I'll go ahead and uh, get started on it. All right, starting to gather up stuff to do some uh, sub-assemblies. I got uh, most of the parts off the sprue. That way I don't have the big, uh, large sprue to contend with. Uh, so uh, it starts out with the, uh, the tail gear. And uh, going through here, what I want to do is uh, I want to go ahead and get the, the wings you know, do the sub-assembly on the wings and get the seam work done on them and stuff. Uh, and, like I say, it starts off with the tail gear here. But as you go through pages, you know, I'm looking. It shows you here's the interior, you know, the uh, uh, in, inside parts of it and how to paint, do whatever, you know. <clears throat> and then you come here to the main landing gear, which are in the wings. See, it goes in here. But from from 1 to 15, it doesn't show you jack about, <laughs> about assembling the wings. But if you look at this picture here, the wings are assembled because it's showing you to put the, the landing lights in. Or the lenses for the landing lights. Then you go back to the... You know, doing uh, the turrets and stuff. 
and then here on 17 it shows you you know how to push the wings in and push them forward and lock them into place okay well that brings me back to where does it show I'm sorry I'm to lick my fingers uh, where does it show to <laughs> assemble the wings you know and you ride back to one with your tail gear but it doesn't show anything about assembling the wings um, one of my beefs is with this kit is a uh, and I'm, I'm sure it's with the other b17s actually you know uh, this is the first b17 I have built since I was a child and uh, the one I built as a child I want to say it was you know like a 172nd scale it was a tiny one uh, but the landing gear is down in in locked position and I would like to put it in flight mode I'm going to build a uh, you guys seen my uh, Boeing 707 that I did the dash 80 well I want to build another uh, wooden stand with the, the uh, boom arm on it to hold it up in flight mode and I don't want the landing gear down so what I'm trying to do is figure out what I need to do to tuck the landing gear up into the housing and uh, this is the parts this is something that that gets me you know they couldn't put the the uh, injector pin marks on the back side they had to put them up front where the detail is which is okay I mean you know you're really unless you get down there and I'll shave them down to a point but you're not gonna be able to see them unless you get down there and look up in the in the hole because they kind of tuck back uh, that one slot right there they kind of tuck back into there but uh yeah I don't build award-winning models anyway but yeah I, I I do like to have uh nice looking stuff yeah and then you got that one that's right there yeah I don't know why they couldn't have put them on the back side but that's not for me to question I guess um it is what it is take it or leave it uh but yeah I'm gonna try to figure out how to put the pull the landing gear up yeah, I thought it was funny. I just wanted to show you guys this, and it doesn't show you to assemble the wings at all. So good thing there's uh, not a whole lot that goes, you know, inside the wings other than the. And this is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward stuff here. You got uh, three pieces. Uh, you got the the main boom here, and then you got a brace, and then you got the. Uh, I guess it would be the uh, uh, floor compartment of the landing gear because that's where it goes. Anyway, I just wanted to point it out. Look at all this wonderful detail. And when you put it all together, you don't see much of anything. You know, you're not going to... I know no one here is going to peer into the cockpit I mean I'll detail out the cockpit and stuff and and do a little bit of work in the gun area since there's such a big uh, clear piece on the front but when you look in these little tiny windows look at there hey it's a clear shot I say it's a clear shot <laughs> anyway uh, you're not gonna see this detail so it's a shame very very bad shame not to put lights in it but I'm not gonna put lights in it I'd like to say I'm just going to detail uh, the gun area the bomber area there and then the cockpit area and then I'm just going to forego the rest of it because you're not going to see all this other stuff why they spent the time to go through and put all that ribbing and stuff in <clears throat> and you know one thing I do know is you know the, this is the same kit um, basically the same tooling as the clear version you know you get a, a cutaway version that has clear parts so i can understand all that but uh, yeah, i was thinking uh, you know you could see more if you kind of put lights in it and then detail all that out and all the bulkheads man the bulkheads uh, uh let's see what i did with the bulkheads i put them away I think there's one of the bulkheads there it's got detail nice detail on both sides of it except the injector pin marks 
plastic and I know they got to be there but still see and here's another another bulkhead none of this stuff is going to de get detailed out uh, the only part I'm going to detail out is whatever is you know in, in this area such a shame such a shame I got lights okay I got some work done to the uh, B17G uh, just going through the instructions here I am uh, let's see I am at getting ready to do start on on number nine uh, one thing I've decided to do is I'm going to omit all the bomb uh, bombs in the bomb rack and everything uh, it goes in the center here and by the time you put these two pieces in you got a bulkhead here and a bulkhead here so you don't see that middle section so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if the bomb doors were open, that would be different. But, you, you know, like I say, you, you, it's just not going to be seen. So I'm not going to fool with it. And I don't have to worry about having the satisfaction of knowing it's in there. And, you know, I really don't care one way or the other. Um, if it, like I say, if it was, if you were going to be able to see it, then that would be different. But um, got the wing assemblies both of them done and I, I did shoot some uh, zinc chromate and it's not showing up as zinc chromate uh, it's it's actually showing up as a darker green but uh, believe me it is zinc chromate um, so I've, I've got all that and I shot uh, in there the best I could I'm going to come back and hand paint yes Vinny hand paint hand paint the uh, landing gear uh, I don't do a whole lot of hand painting. If I can mask it and spray it, then I'm so much better. When I do hand painting, it looks like someone hand painted it with a uh, with a four inch house brush. <clears throat> but um, this is all I'm doing to the to the uh, front bomb uh, bombardier section and the uh, cockpit area. I didn't do anything to the to the instrument panel, as you can see here. Uh, I just all I did was shot with zinc chromate uh, and then come back in and and uh, painted in some details and then gave it a wash and flat coated it uh, actually matte coated it I can't get flat coat anymore from Krylon uh, Walmart stopped selling it uh, my Walmart did anyway and uh, here is the uh, middle section I want to say this is the uh, the radio section and this is where the the ball turret goes up through the, the hole there, uh, actually right there. goes up through here and locks in so you can still swivel. Uh, again, I, I didn't do any detail other than throwing a wash on that. I did do go in and pick out a little bit of detail on this. You know, uh, Just painted the panels on the back wall there black and then gave it a wash and you know the fire extinguisher and a few other things. Uh, like I say, you're not going to see it unless you get up on it and peer down into it, which no one is. So I uh, just got the windows in. You can still see the white from the canopy glue. Uh, this is all I did to the to the uh, ribbing on inside. I've got to go back in and I'm going to clean off the glue edges. Uh, there's some spots. Uh, e ejector e ejector pin marks. I keep calling it injector pin marks, but it's ejector pin marks that are right on the glue line. So all those have got to be cleaned off. Uh, I got the inside the cowlings painted with the uh, green zinc, and if you notice the little shininess in there, uh, I've got a vinyl cutter, and I'm forever more needing a circle template for something. And so what I did here, if you can barely make it out, I went through and made different size, a bunch of different size uh, circle templates. Uh, and I've got this one as well from a, from another project. I think this was from my Stug 3 that I masked mask off the wheels. Uh, so it was, it allowed me to to spray that and then I put the mask and this is the sticky part of the mask that you're seeing here so if I touched it I'd be able to pull it right out but so I gotta be careful um, so it allowed me to come from the inside and mask off all the zinc chromate uh, that way I can shoot all this I'm gonna uh, probably pl uh, prime it with uh, the black Stinyl Res primer uh, got the engines are primed and all I did to prime these uh, I primed these with the uh, Rust-Oleum black primer 
I'm forced to use rust oleum. I'd, I'd much rather use cryolon stuff, but uh, and these are the uh, the props. I've just got them cleaned up and and primed. Um, and you're asking, well, why didn't you prime those black? You know, I wish I had a good answer for you. Um, I should have primed these with the black primer and then just hit them with the with the um, uh, satin black, but I didn't. I, I had a gray primer and, and a black primer out on the railing outside my shop, and so that's what I utilized. But uh, that is it for this update. I got the I did get the wheels together and starting to clean them up. I, I'm going to hit them with a primer. Uh, probably gray primer since I can see gray primer easier and then I'll go back in and try to re-establish some of the pattern uh, still trying to determine whether it's going to be feasible to put this thing in flight mode uh, and the bad part is the center of balance is going to be right in this area and this section this goes right in there so if I if I decide to put this in flight mode, then I'm going to have to this is going to have to go. But then I'm going to have to figure out another way to mount the uh, the ball turret on there. But I I don't know. I may end up just putting it on you know in landed mode. I'd much rather have it in flight mode. But I I didn't you know I was going to figure out a way to put the landing gear up. And, and not have it down, you know, in the full extended position. But it was, um, yeah, it w was not going to work out for me because of the way they've got it molded. And I didn't want to go through and do a whole lot of altering to to bring it back around to where I needed it. I did go in and drill out some exhaust ports there. Uh, trying to determine whether I'm going to open these up or not. Uh, probably just flood them with the with a black wash and then do the streaking off of it because these are the exhaust port holes off top of the wings there but like I say I'll probably just put it in landed mode i much rather have it in flight mode but it ain't gonna happen I don't think working on closing up the fuselage uh, I like to do my fuselage. I like to get the top section. I don't glue the entire deal. I just start at the front and get it closed up the best I can. Try to get the the two halves leveled where there's no uh, real uh, step issue. And I, I'll glue it, and then I let that set up, and then I'll move on back and you know I just take it in sections. Um, I put some glue where this tape is here. This was just to hold it together while I started gluing it. But from here to the nose is glued together and this back section underneath here, you now I got it leveled out and it's, it's glued together. So the next deal I'll just, I'll glue the uh, entire tail section. But uh, that's how you close up the fuselage. That's how I do it anyway. It makes it a lot easier to uh, reduce the gap issue and everything. I see some guys trying to glue the entire deal at one time. That, that's just a headache back to working on the B-17 uh, painting the props at the moment the, the uh, yellow tips and yeah I still got my glove on um, <clears throat> got uh, all the glasses in everything is masked off except for get this out of the way except for the uh, dome and then that front little glass and um, uh, there's a little port window there where the gun goes and then the nose cone I've got to finish all that then I, I'm going to shoot primer and everything there but uh, like I say, I was working on these blades, and I was looking for the decals for the blades, and uh, they are uh, all over this sheet. I don't understand why they couldn't put them on there. It's the uh, little red oval, and then to the left you see the the yellow uh, wording. Uh, there's twelve that go on there on the blades because there's twelve blades, and you can see there's five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, <laughs> and then eleven, twelve is over here. You know, they grouped all these together, grouped all that together. Um, uh, decals are looking a little funky there. You know, and they grouped all those together. 
<laughs> yeah, I just don't understand why they didn't, couldn't have grouped all of the uh, the blade markings together. They are, you can see the carrier film, they are all one piece. I just have like, you know, uh, three decals per blade to put on instead of, uh, it would be uh, six decals per blade. So, yeah, I just pointed out, that was kind of, kind of silly. Uh, got everything painted. Uh, started putting the anti-glare panels on it. I've got the one on the, on the nose as well and yeah it was supposed to go a little a little further forward um, this is a case of don't pay attention to the box art pay attention to what it says in the instructions because in this case the box art is just someone else's uh, rendition or version of this um, it showed on the which and I kind of got kind of got mixed up a little bit uh, on the instructions, it showed the um, anti-glare panel, panels coming back just like I got them here. Okay, and then on the box art, it showed them coming way back here. And so I had them masked off way back here, and I'm like, something ain't right. And so I referred back to the instructions. And uh, so that's that's a point that I just tossed the box top aside and started uh, looking at the instructions. But I had already laid down the paint for the anti-glare panel on the nose. And yeah, it's shiny because I, I've got it uh, glossed. Uh, it should have come, come up to here. I'm not going to worry about it. You know, I'm, I may come back in and, and bring the, the paint back on up further on it. Uh, it's uh, it won't be that hard to do, so I may go ahead and do it. I think I just talked myself into it, um, but um, I've lost one of the guns. <laughs> I thought I broke it, but I completely lost one of the guns. It's supposed to be coming out of this port here, uh, like this one is. I bumped it. I'm like, damn! I thought I, you know, it was like, oh man, I broke it. Well, I can't find that gun anywhere. It must be wedged. You know, I must have broke it loose and, sh and shot it back in there, and it must be wedged inside the the uh, fuselage somewhere because I have swept my floor and everything where I was working on it, and I can't find it anywhere. Um, but uh, I sprayed it with, you know, a shot with all gray primer, and then I come back and I hit it with the uh, um, Krylon aluminum, and a uh, brilliant aluminum and it was all nice and shiny and bright aluminum and i didn't like that uh, and i knew that when i hit it with a with a gloss coat that it was going to dull it down uh, i didn't expect it to dull it down as much as it did but you know i like the way it looks i really do uh, it's it still got the metallic metallic look to it and once i put the flat coat on it it will uh, bring it out even more um, now, there's supposed to be black lines on the wings right here, and I will do that, and you, you're thinking, like, well, you already start putting decals on it, you know, yes, and there's a reason for that, because it's already gloss coated, uh, so after I get all the decals on here, I'm going to flat coat it, and then I'm going to mask off where those lines are supposed to be, there's one that goes all the way across on the nose, and then the uh, front edge, leading edge of the wing is supposed to be black as well. Uh, this back here is supposed to, uh, I can't remember if it's here or here. One of these two is supposed to be black. Um, and it's not showing me on the instructions. Uh, but uh, I don't want to paint on gloss, okay? So uh, after I get all the decals on it, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to flat coat it and then I'm going to mask it off and then shoot the black on it and then hit it again with a flat coat. And so that will seal in the black. Um, that way my decals will be uh, set in stone. And uh, the tape I'm using, once I get the, like this one here is a lot closer to the line than this one is, uh, I will be able to, to do that black line without messing with the decal. And... Uh, uh, I've got the tail flat coated. You can see it's not how everything else is shiny, and then that's that's got a dull finish on it um, because I've got to paint a blue diagonal stripe on here. 
both sides. And once again, I don't want to paint on gloss because it will come off way too easy. And uh, that's probably what I'm going to do after I get it flat coated. I'll come back in and I'll, I'll clean up that nose. Um, the rear wings are rear stabilizers are uh, painted and glossed as well. And the reason I glossed them is so I can go and go here and do my wash. I'm going to do washes on it and everything and then flat coat it. And then I'll come back in and do dry brushing and um, panel staining and stuff. And that way I'll, I'll I'll get it like I want it. And if I have to come back in and flat coat it for the second time, then that's what I'll do to seal everything in. This is what the engine looks like. It's, and the cowling is just set on there. I've got to go in and paint the the edge of the nose, uh, edge of the nose. Uh, I got to paint this part of the engine uh, black because it shows through. Uh, it shows through all those cylinders. You can see the how the cylinders are open. It shows through all that. So I'm gonna paint it, paint it black. I uh, got the props all done. Uh, all three of them. Uh, three of them. It's a four engine airplane. So why would you have three props? Got all four props done. And I've got the tires, come on, got the tires all done up. Uh, let's see, the ball turret is done. I've got to go back in and pull what few masks on it I, I put on. i got to pull those off, paint the guns uh, a gunmetal. i probably paint them black and then dry brush them with a little bit of, little bit of silver or gunmetal. This is the frame that uh, that holds the ball turret. I uh, painted it with a uh, uh, natural, not natural steel, uh, a metal color steel. I, I forget, there's some special hoopla name on it, I don't know. And then this is the rear landing gear assembly. So that's where I'm at on this. Um, so uh, going to continue working on it. Like I said, I just started laying the decals down. Once I get all the decals on the wings, I'm going to flat coat it. And this is kind of different for me. What I normally do uh, when I build a plane like this is I have all the wings on it so I can seal the edge, but you know uh, the gap between the wings and everything, which that's not going to be a big issue because I can I can do that afterwards. Uh, same with uh, with the rear stabilizers. But I normally have all the wings together, and the plane is one solid piece before I even start decaling and and uh, weathering and everything. So this is a it's kind of like a new avenue for me. Uh, but hey, you know, it. whatever gets the job done, so. And I got the striping on one wing. And I cheated. Yeah, that one, that one's not completely straight. I may redo it. I, actually, I know I will. Uh, I went in on my vinyl cutter and I done up a, uh, this is a permanent, black permanent vinyl and, uh, those are 1 16th inch, uh, pinstripes that I, I made. So there is, and I'm sorry I got off camera there for a second, but there's one wing width and what it looks like without back up a little bit so yeah i know i cheated you know but all's fair in love and war and model building and there's a few other things i'm sure but yeah that beats the hell out of masking off all those little lines you can see those little horizontal lines there i don't have to worry about pulling up any of my paint don't have to worry about messing with any of the decals sweet Okay, it's Friday, 3.30, May 1st, so it's finished. This was, uh, <laughs> you know, it is, this was a pretty fun build. Now, i tell you the truth, I started to pack it away. After I finished the Voodoo Bat, uh, I seriously thought about, because I was losing interest in it, and I, uh, I thought seriously about just boxing it back up uh, because I was afraid it was going to take me too long to do what I needed to do. 
uh, and the video that I posted yesterday, which was Thursday, April 30th, uh, that video is up to date. It's not like I, I've filmed uh, videos way ahead of schedule, you know, and the builds are done. I'm pretty much on the spot, you know, so that what I showed in in yesterday's video, like I say, uh, update number three. I done a lot of that work uh, Thursday and fr uh, Thursday and Wednesday of those two the two past days. So like I say, it's it's not like I've jumped way ahead. Uh, I started working on this last night after I've posted that video, and man, this thing just started falling together. And I had I was having so much fun with it. Uh, I did have some issues, and I'll point out some issues that I did have. Um, some I'm not going to point out, but uh, one issue if you guys are building this and I'm pretty sure that it was my fault uh, but I put the cockpit the cockpit goes all the way up to the front the uh, floor section of the cockpit it goes from uh, it goes from back here uh, in the radio room uh, all the way up and you know, like I say, you got the radio room, and then you got the the cockpit, and then you got the bomb area and the gunners section here. All that is one piece that goes in, and it has tabs on the side of the fuselage on on the uh, on this side. Of, I'm I'm backwards. I don't know exactly what it, what I'm looking at at the moment, but uh, it is uh, on this side of the fuselage. You've got pins that that fuselage uh, the uh, cockpit tub and everything fits into the fuselage well when it come time to mount the chin gun the pin for the chin gun was way too far forward and it would not allow the gun to uh, to mount into the pin so it does not swivel it is glued uh, in its permanent position um, like I say it could have been me but I put everything, or so I thought, where all the pins were and got everything lined up. I mean, it closed up without a hitch, just just beautifully. Uh, so, but that was one of the one of the main issues. Um, the uh, I kept breaking the guns off. You know, I, I showed in the video yesterday that I <laughs> I didn't. You know, I had only lost the one gun up here on the front. Uh, Right here, I had lost the, the side gun here. I did break, uh, I didn't break this side gun, but I did break the top gun here and uh, the other side gun. I did end up snapping those off. And I, I broke them off when I was doing the washes. And you can see the washes on here. Uh, everything has been flat coated. And uh, I just want to say this real quick. This thing is so big that I had to put it on the No Cry Babies Allowed turntable. I mean, it's just freaking huge. Uh, it's got a 26-inch wingspan from tip to tip. Uh, I didn't measure how long it is. I had some clown, and yes, I use the word clown firmly. I had some clown on there. Uh, I posted a picture in uh, one of the groups. I'll just put it that way. I uh, had this sitting next to my, you know, the fuselage sitting next to my um, F-101 Voodoo. And I'll show you the picture right here. So I had that, you know, posted that picture on there, and this clown says, uh, are you sure that's not a 172 scale? And then he starts quoting, you know, well, if it's a, if it was a 148, it'd be like 19 inches, and yours is only 140, you know, yours is only 14 inches long. Uh, my, the best uh, reply that I could give him at that time, I said, yes, I know how to freaking read. And then I posted a picture of the 148th on there. Asked me if this, was, you know, was I sure this was a, wasn't a 172nd scale? Give me a freaking break. Anyway, um, the you know put down the on the paint. I put down uh, the Krylon Brilliant Aluminum. This is what I used. It came out re really, really shiny, like polished aluminum i mean it, it looked really nice but that's not what i wanted for this plane so i ended up uh gloss coating it so i could put all the decals and the washes and stuff on it 
and then uh, I came back and after I got all the washes on and put the, um, uh, the decals on and then put the washes on it, I came back and flat coated everything uh, for the main reason of having to paint the black on here. I painted the black on the tail and on the leading edge of the wings and on the leading edge of these wings here and in between the props there. Um, the black lines are not uh, supplied in your decals. If you have this kit and you want to build it, I ended up cutting uh, vinyl, as you've seen. Yeah, I, I cut the strips of vinyl and laid that down. Um, I did not come back and uh, extend the, the olive drab on the nose. I decided just to let it go. Uh, I just decided to let it go. Uh, and how I did the on the top turret there, the uh, framework, uh, what I ended up doing was I used uh, HVAC tape, HVAC tape uh, for air conditioning and I just cut strips and lined out the the framework on there. Uh, that was the best way I knew to do it other than, you know, just driving myself insane trying to mask all that off. Uh, got the engine staining here and I'm not going to pick this up. Uh, I've got engine staining underneath as well. Uh, the I've got uh, the washes underneath look really, really good because it, I, I drilled out the exhaust and everything. I mean, it, it, it turned out pretty good. really like the way it looks. Uh, is it the best job in the world? No, not by any means, but it, it looks, you know, it'll look really good on my display uh, shelf in, inside. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, I used Easy Line, and I'll see if I can zoom in. You can see it right there. Oh, and there goes my camera dropping down. My camera, and the reason it's bouncing, it's on an extended arm and everything. But you can see right here, there's the easy line, and then you can see another one going right across there. That goes up to the tail. Uh, I used, uh, let's see, what the, I'm trying to see what the, uh, it doesn't have a, anyway, this is what I used. And it doesn't have a, a usually has the size on there, like a 0.05 or whatever but it doesn't have it. Um, oh, let me back out again. The uh, masked off the, the stripe here and painted. I did have some, uh, when I was masking off for the, the leading edges, you know, painting black and stuff on there, I did have some paint uh, peel up uh, right in here. I had some paint peel up right there, which is, I'm okay with that because it's like, you know, as you see, this is not a clean, build anyway uh, so that's just uh, wear and tear and then right here and you can barely make it out where the F is right in the middle of that F uh, I, it just it lifted it off and uh, I used very low tack tape and I, I put it on my my shirt several times to reduce the, the tackness tackiness of that uh, there so uh, uh, the window that you see right here, that window kind of tried to fall back in. I ended up gluing it into place, but there was no place that I could have access to from the inside to push it back into place. But it's it's still there, and it but it's just kind of leaning in a little bit on the top. Um, oh, the uh, tape that I used since we've been in in quarantine, I've not been able to uh, go to Hobby Lobby and get my Tamiya tape. I you know and I. I know washi tape is similar to to me a tape but even with the sharpest of knife i still have difficulty cutting that when i try to cut the uh uh run my knife across it it, it wants to pull it you know off of what i'm trying to mask off and everything i don't have that issue with to me a tape i have been i love to me a tape so i will continue to buy to me a tape uh, this is what I used to mask off the windows, and this is, and you can get it at, on um, uh, Amazon. You get three rolls for like uh, 16 bucks, I think it is. But this is the fine line, inch and a half fine line. It does pretty good, but I learned something uh, on this build that I did not know, okay? 
I've used that tape several times to mask off different things and had no issues. Uh, I masked off all the windows, all the cockpit windows, everything here, uh, except that top turret there, uh, with that fine line tape. And I left it on uh, when I would, you know, I would take it out in the sunshine and, and you know, do what I needed to do. I, I primed it, left it out in the sun, you know, to, to dry the primer and brought it back in. And then I, uh, when I put down the paint, it was out on the rail, you know, in uh, kind of half in, half out of sunshine, you know. Uh, it left major residue on my glass. Every window except for that one big one right here where that gun pot is. Um, uh, this I used a uh, washi tape to to mask off the nose there, but uh, so it, you know I, was, I will continue to use that tape. I just won't leave it on for a period of time. It was it, it was on there for like I want to say probably six days, uh, five to six days, uh, actually probably six or seven days. Anyway, uh, it it left residue, and I had to end up taking. This stuff here, this uh, adhesive remover, this is like Goo Gone. And I mean, I, I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and finally got all that mess off of it. But um, that's it. Another one for the books. Um, I know I'm forget, you know, forgetting to say something about the plane that I wanted to say, but I just don't know. Um, Yep, that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys followed along on this, this build, I appreciate you watching. And I, I will just catch you in the uh, next build. So take care.